In this video, I'm going to go over in great detail the wiring, which is going to cover for car audio as well as marine audio systems. They are exactly identical, so just because I'm using a marine stereo, don't let that be swayed and you have to jump off the video because it doesn't pertain to you. It actually does pertain to you. Um, and it's also good to just inform yourself not just on what the topic is that you need to learn about is, is if it's for wiring car stereo. It's good to learn about marines because if you're doing marine, it's good to also use the same knowledge and let it transfer over to car audio as well. So it's good. More, more education is always better for anybody. So this here is the Clarion 16-pin harness. Most of these stereos do utilize a 16-pin harness. Just like this, they may look different in color, size, pin configurations, whatever. It doesn't matter. Only thing that really matters in aftermarket car stereos, and I say aftermarket because we are replacing the stereo. Now, of course, on a boat, boats don't come with their own brand car stereos uh, or marine stereos. They always choose an aftermarket brand such as this one, Clarion, or whatever one that they use to fill the hole. So, with that said, we're going to go through these, and I'm also going to tell you about the colors not only in this harness, but also some of them are proprietary harnesses made by other manufacturers that you might encounter that I may not go over in great, great detail with this Clarion here because I try to state that my video is detailed and explanatory in all these aspects. I'm going to make sure I cover all of that. So, with that said, here we go. Now, the power side of the harness is always going to be the same. Your yellow is going to be your, your constant 12 volt fuse wire. They're always going to have a fuse in line here. Of course, your factory, your fuse panel is going to have a second one, but yellow goes to a constant fuse wire. It's very important because if you turn your radio off and you turn it back on, it's going to forget the disc, what song it was on, forget your clock and your preset station. So it's imperative that the yellow gets fused constant 12 volt power. Your other 12 volt wire is going to be the red. The red is going to get a key on or an accessory power circuit. So that way when you turn your key to the accessory position, which is going to be the first click, and when the car is resting in the ignition position, it's also going to have a power on accessory. It does not get 12 volts during crank. That is an accessory wire, and it's always going to be what the red is going to go to. So that's what's going to determine when the radio is powered on and off by this wire being triggered on and off with 12 volts. Your black is the exact opposite of your yellow. This is going to be, as you can see, it has this little terminal on there so you can screw this onto a factory bolt or whatever, which is a good idea. Factory ground um, is in a harness if you have one is the way to go, but it, don't be afraid to use a secondary ground. More ground is always better. The rule of thumb with the ground wire is the lower the impedance, the better it's going to perform, so that's good. Make sure it goes to a nice, clean, solid source of metal on your vehicle. Moving along, we got a brown wire. Now, brown wire, this really only pertains to the middle of the road and upper end units, but I'll tell you what it is. It is a, called a telephone mute wire. So what that means is that if you were to have this wired in with an external kit for a hands-free Bluetooth or something to that effect, this wire would get a ground signal input. It would attenuate the audio on your receiver so that way the phone call could be completed. And when the, the ground signal goes away, the brown will open up and the radio will go back to playing the way it was before it was interrupted in the first place. If you have an orange or an orange slash white wire, this is an illumination wire. So when this wire sees 12 volts, it's going to dim the display of the receiver. So that way when you're doing night driving, it's not going to be blaring in your face with this bright light. The orange white will do that automatically for the illumination input. This wire would normally see the wire resting at ground and switching to 12 volts when the lights are turned on. And that applies to all stereos. Now, you're going to have one or both of these wires, which are the blue and the blue-white. Now, this is something I'd like to elaborate on. The blue wire is for a power antenna lead. Now, this wire, why this is important is because the blue wire is an antenna. So when your AM FM receiver is on and you listen to the AM or FM tuner or the HD radio tuner, this wire is going to get energized 12 volts and it's going to send power to your power antenna. So that way, only and only when the stereo receiver portion is on, this wire will get 12 volts. Why this is important is because if you got this confused with the other blue, with the white stripe right next to it in the harness, and you use this as your amp turn on, your amp would work when your radio tuner is on, but then when you put on a disc or Bluetooth or satellite or any other source, this wire is going to go low to ground and you're going to think that your radio is bad. When in fact there's nothing wrong with it, it's just you. You didn't wire it right. 
Amplifier turn on must have the blue with the white stripe wire. This is going to get 12 volts in all sources, what it's on AM, FM, CD, Pandora, iPod, satellite, whatever, always going to get 12 volts. Very important. Blue, only use that for your power antenna and nothing else. Last but not least in this harness, we have eight sets of speaker wires because these are all stereos, you know, as of the last century pretty much are parallel outputs. You're going to have a pair of whites. White solid is going to be a front left positive. Your white with the black stripe is going to be a front left negative. Your front right, your solid gray is going to be your front right positive. Your gray with the black stripe is going to be your front right negative. Now your rears, your green, solid green is going to be your rear left positive. Green black stripe is going to be your rear left negative. And then your purples are your rear right. Purple is going to be your right rear positive. Purple right with the stripe is going to be your rear right negative. Always stripes and negative. That usually works the opposite when people are doing custom or aftermarket wiring when you use a, um, a piece of aftermarket speaker cable. Typically people will use a stripe as a positive, but don't let that sway you. Always use a battery to pop out the speaker. Use a or check my one of my other videos where I explain how to test the phasing of a speaker so it's accurately connected. But don't take it for granted. If you're just doing it the simple way, um, do it the way I explained, and you'll never have to worry about anything else. Otherwise, you might want to do a little bit more research and just educate yourself because it's good to know about speaker phasing polarities, why that's important to you and in any sound system. So that's that. Now there are a couple other brands out there like Eclipse and Pioneer and they use another wire which is yellow and black. That is their method of doing a telephone mute as well. So the brown you might also find in that variation as well. Um, and you also might find a pink in some cases. The pink hasn't been used in God knows how long and I don't even think it's even worth my time even talking about it. But should you have a question or ever come across something else that I've never even seen because certainly I have not seen it all in my lifetime, I probably will never will. Um, I'd be a fool to say I ever have. However, in the last 26 years, I'm, I'm sure I could say that I've seen enough of it, certainly enough to educate you and give you this tutorial. But if you have something to share and you're not sure, by all means, shoot me a comment. I'll do my best to get back with you and help you out because that's what I do. Um, so that's it. That's your wiring on your car and, and marine stereo stuff. If you have anything else, shoot me a comment. Thanks for watching.